Don't, 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 look, don't look at your notes. Just teach and test your own memory. I'm not grading you on this. That's for me. When will the surviving spouse take 100% of the decedent's separate from the real property? Okay, who wants to tell me what the circumstances are in which your authority? What's it your statutory authority? Anyone want to tell me? Someone must know it. Friend? Uh, when there's no children? Surviving children? When there's no surviving children. When there's no surviving children. Um, what if there were surviving descendants of children? Okay. okay. So no descendants. No and descendants. And um, that there's, they didn't leave a surviving parent. So the decedent didn't leave a surviving parent or sibling. Or, I guess, the, uh, or, descendants. or descendants of siblings, which would be descendants of parents also. That's exactly right. So what is your authority for that somewhat complex but dead on response? Uh, 201.003. Okay. Um, 2.01 point. Let me state that. Let me state so. 2.01 point zero zero two. Yeah, I thought I heard you say two. <laughs> yeah, two, not three. Because three is we're supposing community property. Two is we're supposing separate property, including separate real property. And it's subsection C and D. Remember, and have we seen a problem like this? What was the problem? Hell, this was problem two. It was the last one we were working on Tuesday night. How soon we forget, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, all right. Thanks. Yeah, this is problem two. This is the situation in problem two. And in in um, 201.002, C and D, is D limit C, right? Let's look at, and we're talking about separate estate of an intestate. That's when there's a surviving spouse. Subsection C says, except as provided by subsection D. Oh, crap. That means we've got to read another section. I changed the, the rule here. Um, if the person, what person are we talking about? If the person, what person are we talking about? If the person has no child or descendant of a child, what? The decedent. The decedent. The intestate decedent. Of course, that's who we're talking about. Not of course, but I mean that's who else would we be talking about? And you might think I'm making it up. If you look at subsection A, if a person who dies in test state leaving a surviving spouse, okay, it's in test state decedent, you know that. Otherwise, we'd be in another section, in another room, in another world, in another life, or death, as the case might be. Um, all right, except provided by subsection D, if the person, the intestate state decedent, has no child and no descendant of a child, then the surviving spouse is entitled to all of the personal estate, 100% of the personal separate. Personal property, separate personal property, 100% of it. Okay? And how much of the separate real property? So I guess that's entitled to what? Friend, you're exactly right. To what? In C2. What? One half, exactly right. So I guess that's entitled one half of the person's, that's again the intestate receiving land, that's the real property, without a remainder to any person. What does that mean? Does that mean balance or does that mean remainder in the technical, legal, states and land and future interest sense? It means that that's right. It means you get one half in fee simple absolute. It's not that stupid one third life estate in subsection B of this section, right? Um, okay. So, and the other one half goes and one half the person's land, the decedent's land passes and is inherited according to the rules of descent and distribution. And we find, just remind me of the name, sorry, I got such a short memory. Where do we find the rules of descent and distribution? The other rules of descent and distribution? 001. 001, exactly right, 001. And remember, we've already kind of, we've seen, well, we haven't seen it actually. We're, we're, we, we, we talked about it the other night, and we see it a lot starting tonight. Um, and uh, 
B talks about if there's no survive, this is no surviving spouse, the children uh, and the descendants of the children, that's the surviving descendants of any predecessor to take. But by definition, we wouldn't be in subsection B because 002 subsection C says there's, we're only in subsection C because there are no children, because the decedent has no children. So we wouldn't be in B. C, 001, back to 001, C tells us equally to the parents if there are two parents. D tells us if there's only one parent, one half of the parent, the other half of the siblings are descendants of siblings. You're going to see that um, starting this evening. Um, e, I hope. <laughs> e tells us if there are no parents, then it is the siblings and their descendants. And F tells us that it's more remote collaterals if there are no parents or descendants of parents. Uh, Ms. Brand, how far down do we go? We're just doing great. Um, passes according to the rules of descent and distribution. Now I'm back in 002, 002, 002, subsection C, subsection C, I guess, C3. Um, how far down do we go? Do we go to subsection F and 001, subsection F and 001? Are those more remote grandparents and descendants of grandparents? Aunts, uh, uncles? I don't believe so. I believe D limits it. D limits it. How does D limit it? So it must be a parent. Or a sibling or a descendant of those people, of the parent or the siblings. Exactly right. And if there aren't those people surviving, then the surviving spouse is entitled to the entire estate, the personal property. Well, they already got 100% of the personal property under C1, right? And then not just half of the real property under C2 and 3, but 100% of it. If So we never get to subsection F, G, or H. And we never get there in 002, subsection C and D, taking care. Easy, straightforward. Again, you have to be a stupid moron not to get this. No, it's horrifying. It's horrifyingly complicated. This isn't what the average intestate decedent would want. I'm sure the average intestate decedent, if they knew this was happening, they'd probably make a will. But I suspect they wouldn't want it to go this way. Or they'd come back from the grave and strangle legislators if they could, just like those zombies or, 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 or you know, or, or what, whatever, Count Dracula, you know, something, something like that. Vampires that suck their blood, okay? It is so complicated. That's the bad news. The worst news, I'm going to test you on this in a second. And the, and the even worse news is the bar examiners are probably going to test you on this. They almost always ask a question about intestate succession. At least probably I'd say every other bar exam they ask an intestate succession question. In, in, the, in the intervening years, they probably ask a complicated will situation, but this, remember, there is no will. Okay, Ms. Brand, you great. Thank you very much. That's just what, what I wanted to review. I wanted to review um, problem number two. Now let's blow through problems number three and four pretty fast. I think by now we can we see the pattern and see what's going on. I think we can get through three and four very fast. And then I want to ask you the question I sent you in the twin, um, and via twin this afternoon. Okay, three and four. In problem number three, let's see, in problem number three, the decedent, here's the decedent, put him off. There's a surviving spouse, and I think only C1 survives, right? There's only one child who survives in problem number three. Yeah, 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 right, right, right. Can you ask another question? No, you can't ask another question. Yeah, how do you how, how do you how can what you clear up for? Or can I go S S D one, C two? You know, you know how you're gonna do it? You're gonna pay attention to call the question. Okay. I say please explain fully. You're gonna have to spend a paragraph on it. Okay? If I say write your client a letter, you're gonna have to go on paragraph on it. And I'll say one of those things that you have to I don't you know, just don't just outline it. Explain. Fully. Because remember, you know on a final exam, who's grading your final exam? Me. Me. Okay. But who are you talking to on the final exam? Well, you're talking to maybe you're talking to an intelligent person, maybe an intelligent teenager, maybe your grandma or grandpa, who's not a moron, but who's intelligent, and who can understand this perfectly well if you explain it to him or her very simply. Because they don't know anything about the law. Most grandma or grandpa are lawyers. So you're going to have to take it step by step. That's not a big one. And I'll try to remember to remind you all of that a couple of points throughout the course of the semester. Great question. Great question. Any
any other questions that are equally as good? Any other questions that are worse? Okay, all right. Okay. Problems three and four. Problem number three, we've got um, the surviving spouse, and we just have one of the children who survived, right? All the other children and the grandchildren died. Is that, is that right? Is that, is that, is that right? Correct. Okay. All right. Um, how do we, uh, quickly, how do we divide this, and then why? Who wants to take problem three? And then, and then we'll do, who wants to take problems three and four? Because in four, I think we have, um, this is number three, and in number four, I'm going to put this in a different color, actually. In number four, we have, I think, just one of the grandchildren surviving. Is that right? Um, <coughs> grandchild six. Grandchild six is, is, is the number four. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So number three, we have a child. Be, be eager to see. These answers are going to be the same. Um, number three, who takes and why? Take me through it pretty fast. Someone can take me through it fast. If no one can take me through it fast, I'll leave you on your own for problems three and four. Someone take me through it fast. One. You got five seconds. Yes. Ms. Jones, yes. Thank you. The surviving spouse takes one third of the separate um, personal property. Okay. Surviving spouse, um, here's, here's the separate property. Personal property, one third of the surviving spouse, yes, and? And. Where's the other two thirds go? Okay. Z1. This is in problem number three. I should have had it. Now I was confused because I'm, I, I've got the wrong color. This is number three. Okay, that's. That's, that's the separate personal property. How about the separate real property? The surviving spouse has their one-third interest in the life estate. Oh, boy. A one-third life estate is the surviving spouse. And what does the rest of it do? And um, what does C1 take? C1 takes two-thirds interest in fee simple absolute. Two-thirds in fee simple absolute. That disposes of the rest of the present possessory estate. And anything else? One-third interest in the rest of the That's right. Plus the one-third. That's the remainder of absolute following mom's life estate. Okay, that's the separate property. Or personal to you. Okay. And you know, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just doing this, Mr. Graham. You know, I'm talking the whole thing through and just making those notes and making sure that's what I have done. Okay. Um, all right, that is the separate property. How about community property? The surviving spouse has all of the community. Okay, the surviving spouse has has equals 100%, that is she, she or he, Keeps his her one half and inherits all the seeds one half because what? Because um, they only have that, because C1 is also her. C1 is also her descendant too. Okay? Alright, that's problem number three. Um, any change in problem number four other than substituting G6 for C1? No. That's it. Okay? In problem number four, everywhere that you said C1 is G6. That's all it is, same percentages, and, and for the same reasons, if we're in the same section, we were in section 201.002, subsection B, right, to answer the, um, the, uh, the person has one or more children or a descendant of a child, that's problem three and four, we have that situation, the right spouse takes one third of the personal estate, two thirds go to the, go to the descendants, Three, um, the strong spouse and title life estate and one third of the person's land with the remainder, that is the balance, that is everything else that's not that one third life estate to the uh, children. Again, the person's child, the intestate child, and children and their descendants, and that, if that means, or the surviving descendants of any predeceased child, but I think you probably um, remember that. And then for the community property, we are in 003. Subsection B2, right? 003. This is B2. I'm writing B2. <laughs> 201.003 B2. Because all the surviving children and descendants of the deceased spouse are also children and descendants of the surviving spouse, then the surviving spouse not only keeps her one half, but she takes 100% of the decedent's one half. Would be 100%. Would be zero percent of the seeds one half. She'll always keep it. All right? Questions about any of that? Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Okay. Um, 
Let's talk about the hypo extension. Okay, the attempt uh, for a moment. Um, the key thing, husband dies in test age survived by wife and one child, a daughter, D, who's 28 years old. Husband's estate consists only of these three assets. On the final exam, you'll get questions like this. So I might make who survives more complicated, and there may be someone dies within 120 hours, but you'll get some variation like this. Excuse me, on the final exam, both perhaps on the multiple choice and also on the essay. Okay, um, so uh, husband's estate consists of these things. Now, I know it's not very likely that someone's only going to have three assets. It's more likely that someone's going to have no assets or a lot more than three assets. But for test purposes, for our review purposes, and for test purposes, I usually keep it manageable. It's four, five, six assets, not even more. Okay? Um, so, they have this house where they both live, a car, and a checking account that has to be in husband's name only. How? He dies in test date. How is his estate distributed? Um, what are wife's rights to continue to occupy the house? And what additional facts do we need to know in order to answer this question? Because you don't have enough facts to answer the question. What would you like to know? What would you like to know? Uh, so I wrote down, uh, I'd like to know if the house was separate or community property. Yeah, you'd like and to know if the house was separate or community property. What else? Would you and if the car is separate or community property. car is separate or community, community property. property. Anything else you'd like to know? Those is, uh, because the checking account is... What about the checking account? So you need to know if each asset is separate or community property. If on the final exam I don't tell you, what's the presumption? Community property. Yeah. It's community property, okay? But if I don't tell you on the final exam, you should probably answer it both ways, okay? But I'm going to give you enough facts on the final exam. To <coughs> which it is. Okay, I haven't told you yet. That's one thing. Those are what you want to know what each asset is. Okay. So even though it was just in his name? <laughs> I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready to talk about it specifically. Oh. You want to know what each asset is. I'm okay. just saying what questions do you need to know, okay? And then I'll come back to it, okay? Uh, what else would you like to know? I would like to know if the daughter is also a descendant of his brother. That's right, the W's child also, and we'd like to know about that. And um, for the next time I do this, because I just made this typo up yesterday, um, for the next time that I do this, you'd like to know if husband and wife lived in the house and when. I told you they lived in the house. Next time, next class, I'm not going to tell them they lived in the house, right? That's one of the things that you're going to need to know in terms of the rights to continue to occupy the house. Maybe they lived in an apartment. And they, if they didn't, if they owned this house, but they didn't live in this house, then maybe it's not a homestead. Right? Okay. But I told you they lived in the house right before they died. What's her right to occupy the house? That's right. Well, you say 100 percent, but she's got the homestead occupancy rights, and their exclusive rights to occupy the house for as long as she wants to, until she dies, or until she decides to abandon it or sell her interest. We'll find out what her interest is in just a moment. Okay. Now, that's what I can hear exactly right. Now I've got to figure out what each one of these assets is. And it depends, right? I mean, if you don't know, the presumption is it's community, but you might have to answer it both ways. So let me give you some additional facts. Let's say the house where they were living in, husband inherited it from his mother three years ago. Be a separate property. That's exactly right. And how would title pass? How does it? How does it descend at his death? This doesn't. This doesn't. You don't care yet. It's a separate property. You don't care yet if that's also if D is also his daughter, right? I mean, that only matters if it's community property. Right? Okay. So this is separate property because he inherited it four years ago. What's the title? It's a separate real property. I hear a lot of muttering, but yeah, she has a one-third life estate. This is title. This is ownership. This is how it's distributed. She has a one-third life estate, and the daughter has what? That's right. She has two-thirds in fee simple absolute, and one-third best remainder in fee simple absolute following her mother or stepmother, which we don't know yet, life estate. Okay. All right. That, that's it. That's that's. Um, separate, real property. Um, how about the car? Um, let's say that the car, interestingly enough, the car was also inherited three years ago 
by husband from his mother. That's separate property. All right, how's that distributed? That's separate personal property, and therefore what? That's right. The, the wife gets one third, and the daughter gets two thirds. Let's change the facts. Let's say that, in fact, the car was purchased three years ago by husband and wife during marriage with using community funds, using funds from a joint bank account. And what is it? Separate property or community property? It's community property, of course, all right? And now, how's it distributed? Oh, we gotta know what it is. D is the W's daughter. D is W's daughter. How's it distributed? That's right. She takes 100% her one half plus 100% of husband's one half. Well, let's say D is her stepdaughter. She's not her daughter. How is the car inherited? The father gets half of the interest on the single father. The daughter gets a half interest in the car. She gets 100%. Surviving spouse, wife, keeps her 50% of the community. And the daughter, daughter's not also. W's daughter, daughter takes 100% of dad's and sets up the students. What does that mean for like driving privileges? Does what does that, that mean for driving privileges? This, I want you to ask your professor in your personal property class. What, what does it mean for I don't know what it means for driving privileges. <laughs> That's it. I think more importantly, what does it mean for ownership? They each own an uninvited one half. You know, oh, okay, I, I don't know. I want to sell it. Have, so if they, yeah. if they if they can't get along, especially the stepchild, right? They may not be able to get along. What are they likely going to be able to do? They may have they may have to sell it. If they can't agree, guess what's going to happen? We're going to have to go to court and have the court partition it. You think the court's going to partition a car in kind? No, they're going to order it sold, and the proceeds are worth right. being sold. What? Just cut the car in half. Cut the car in half. It's exactly right. Do you remember Seinfeld? Do you remember the Seinfeld with the bicycle? Yes. When when when. Kramer had to decide, no, no, it wasn't, it was, it was Kramer and Elaine, they were each sharing the bicycle, and it was the joint that had to decide who, who owned it, and, and he said, cut it in half, and you know, you Okay, all right, now, let's go to the It's in husband's name only. Husband's name only. Wife can't even sign on it. What's the presumption? Community property, that's exactly right. Sometimes I ask a question like this. Facts. Um, what, what, what facts would you like to know if it's separate property? It could be separate property. Under what circumstances might it be separate property? What type of um, money has gone into it? Well, that's that's right. What type of money has gone has gone into it? Maybe he opened it um, last month with a gift from his brother, and then he died. Right? That's 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 his separate property. But the presumption is it's community. I'm going to tell you it's in his name only, but they he deposited his paycheck. Into that account, community yeah, property, of course. The community property is earnings acquired during marriage. It's community property. So, how is it distributed if it's community property? Like the car. Depends on whether D is also W's daughter or not. Okay. All right. Questions about that? This is this is actually fairly fairly simple, and I don't mean to you know I don't mean to you know, I, I know I tease you a lot. Family and more, I can miss it. No, no, it's hard. Um, this one's really only more I could miss. But, um, no. <laughs> no, 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 this is, this, 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 this is relatively easy, but it's not super easy because there are subtleties. You need, you need additional facts. So on the final exam, I will give you, I always, you're going to always find some version of this. And if this were on the final exam, this would be about a 15 or 20 minute question. I'll be able to, to, do, to do it fairly fast. And I will give you facts. Um, often, I make it a little more complicated as to who survives and in what order they die and that kind of thing. And often, I'll have five or six assets, and often, it'll be a 30 to 45 minute question on the final exam. Okay, so this, 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 this is going to be a lot like that on the final exam. I think on my claim site, right, I've posted a sample question and a sample answer, and it's, it's this kind of thing. There's some things in it, I think, as I recall. That you don't, unless you don't know yet, but you will know, um, you will know soon. But you can start looking at that. Um, okay, question about that. All right. So, oh, I've got a note to note to self. Is it from 1991? What? Is it what? Is it from 1991?
but it is not from 1991. <laughs> no, but I got something else from 1991 for y'all, but I'm not going to tell you. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to tell you. I, I think, I don't want to tell you. The old law, what the, the old law was. You laugh. But you're, someday you're going to do title work. I will not do title someday work. Someday you're going to do title work because you're going to be out there starving and you say, okay, I'll take title. We'll work for title work. Yeah, we'll, 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 sorry, we'll, work, we'll, we'll do title work, right? And now you won't. But I mean, someone might, someone in this room might be, I'm starving. We'll do title work. We'll, I'm desperate enough to do title work. And when you do that, they're going to say, all right, trace the chain of title. Who owns this? And you're going to go back and go, oh, crap. Someone died intestate in 1937. What was the old law in 1937? You're going to have to know the old law. I'll just tell you. You'll call. <laughs> I might be dead by then. My estate will be distributed by then. So, um, okay. All right. Um, let's see. What, okay. So what I want to tell you is, of course, you know this. The second row is going to be on call next week. Mm -hmm. You don't have to talk to me. You're so nice. So you can if you want to. You're so nice. I'll get a pass. You want you, you, you can pretty much get a pass. Or I can just tell you in advance because you've been such a good participant. So you can talk. And the rest of you... Mr. Open Records request included. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> and next week, please read through and including assignment three. Assignment three in your syllabus, although honestly, realistically, what did I tell you for this week? Through assignment two? I don't think we'll get past it. I really, really, really don't think that. I'm only doing that because in the Unlikely event, like we start with the first page of assignment three, someone would say, you didn't tell me to read assignment three, and I always read just on the weekends. Okay, fine. Read, assign read assignment three, but, but you'll be safe if you've read through assignment two. So, um, and then by the end of the week, when I haven't even quite finished assignment two, y'all are going to say, ah, we were safe. Yeah, you we were totally optimistic. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Now, here is what I want to do next. Let's, write, let's, let's, let's wipe all this off. And what I want to do is break you into small groups again, and I want you to work and get the, uh, break you into small groups in a moment. Don't go there yet. I want you to work problems 5 through 11. And I'm hoping that we can go a little faster, and I don't, because some of these look a lot alike. So I'm going to give you, there's seven problems. I think we could do them in 15 minutes, two minutes each, because some of them look so much alike. So um, let me ask you, before we, are, we do these problems, what is the difference between problems 5 through 11 on the one hand and problems 1 through 4 on the other? There's no surviving spouse, okay? There's no surviving husband or wife. Therefore, we are out of which section or sections and into which section or section in the laws of descent and distribution, 201, 001, 2, and 3. Which ones are we not looking at anymore? Which ones are we looking at? We're out of 002 and 003 because there's no surviving spouse, and we're into 001. I mean, yes, because the state of intestate, not leaving spouse, no surviving spouse, right? So we're into 001. So that's all you have to do is look in 001, although you'll have to look in 201.101 to see how. Sometimes when there's different generations or whatever, how the uh, how the descendants stay. And five through eleven, we're, we're all it's all descendants, right? I think it's just there's just children or grandchildren, or great grandchildren that survive. So it's just descendants. So it's pretty easy. We're in two o one point double o one, and which which section of double o one? Before I, I break you into in small small groups, which section of double o one or sections of double o one? Are we in five? B. Or we are in B. That's exactly right. Yes, yes, yes. We are in B. Okay? Because the person's estate descends and passes to the person's children and their descendants. No, no. That and doesn't mean and. It means or. The children or to the surviving descendants of any predeceased child. Right? Okay. So we're grandchild for that. So that's where we are. 201.001. Subsection B. All your answers are going to be found there and in 201.101. Now, I'll walk around, raise your hand if you have questions, break into small groups, 8.30, let's see how you're doing by quarter of nine. Go. 
Do you guys want to team up? Or? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so, uh, going off with five. So, no surviving spouse. So, I, I just kind of said, uh, you know, 201. Uh, 001 uh, B, uh, you just goes to the person's estates, descends and passes the children and the children's descendants. So I just kind of did one third uh, for everything because there's no wife, so it's kind of concur. Okay, okay. <laughs> and then the, the next one's kind of the great switcheroo, right? Uh, bringing in the grandchildren, just kind of equally divide things about above them for real and uh, personal property. Do you agree or? Yeah. Any difference between personal property and real property here? Uh, not yet any between, between five. Any, any difference between real property and personal property in this set of problems? Not yet. Does yeah. subsection B make any? Nah, entire state. No. Okay. And what about community property and um, separate property? Well, community property isn't an issue because. That's right. There is no community property. property. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. <laughs> Uh, Want to go to six or we we cool so far? Yeah, then we're on six. Okay. So basically, that child gets like one third, and all his descendants get all one. You on the other hand. Uh, seven? Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I just want to make sure that I It's a very nice program you have. Do you have all the statutes in there? Yeah, I, I manually loaded them. That's incredible. I guess you learned them pretty well. Part of it was from marital property. I see. It kind of coincides. That's pretty incredible, yeah. Seven. So now we have one child living. Yeah, and different types of divisions because there's only uh, there's like three grandchildren, right? Yeah. And then there's two grandchildren, so it's like with those two, they get one six, one six, and the other three get like one, one ninth, one ninth, because you do uh, one third times one third. Yep. Uh, all right. And then the personal real is the same. And no community property. So what you have is not one nine one area because you have one third divided by two. You have one six percentage of C2. So C3 is dead. C3 has three kids. Correct. Yeah. So B two only has two kids. Yeah, yeah. So they get they divide the one third between the two of them. G four through six. So by yeah. yeah, and then that uh, G two gets one third because he's the only living descendant of uh, C two. So it's kind of. Me too. <laughs> G2. 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 G
G4 through G6, right? G4, yeah. And G3 had, had deceased, so you don't count him in the equation or her. C1 is alive, C2 and C3 are dead, so C2 is grandchildren and C3 is grandchildren. C2 only had two, C3 had three. How would you be able to divide them differently? Yeah, so I guess the tricky part here is just dividing amongst the grandchildren. And actually, or, or with the great grandchildren. On eight? Or nine? Oh, we're, we're oh, okay. Are we still? No, we're on nine. Okay. I didn't know which um, yeah, actually, so I had a question to, I mean, I don't know if this is exactly possible, because you have, like, great, great, grand, grand, like, it goes down pretty so far. Okay. All righty. Wow. Well, I mean, I guess, you know, it's possible. Right, I mean, yeah, definitely. People are living for incredible lengths of time, though. Yeah, and that too. Oh, we're, we're on nine now? Yeah. Okay. So here's the thing. Yeah, yeah. So basically, uh, you divide the grandchildren's interest amongst the great grandchildren. Does that make sense? Kind of how we did with uh, children and grandchildren. So between the two great grandchildren, you had a uh, one six. Right, because you had multiplied one half times one third between the two grandchildren, and you multiply. Oh. Your dad. Your dad. Yeah. <laughs> 
You had C1 surviving, and then C2 passed away, and then uh, C2 uh, had G2. And then, uh, How are we doing here? Good. Good. Yeah. How's everyone doing? You got about three more minutes. Do you have any other trick questions you can ask us? Yeah, I know. You are. Yeah, right. Yeah. No, okay. Okay. Any, any trick questions you can ask? Well, I don't know. I mean, maybe 10 and 11. Or, you know, you want to be 12? Yeah. They yeah. wouldn't put the P, yeah, so they would have had a six. One half of one third. Yeah. And then you divide that into multiply it by one half. Yeah. Yep. Oh, so ten is the trick question. Uh oh. You should get this. I'll pay for it. You get, you get this attack here. I'm not getting that. <laughs> Maybe the word ocular. Ocular. Okay. Actually, it would be fun to get into boxes and just like do your inheritance from there and be like, just scratch somebody out. Like, <laughs> write them all, write your like, will. When I die, you can get to find a will right here. Yeah. I'm on my back now. Okay. All right, so we are selling off all the children. And it's only grandchildren. Right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So basically, it's just the grandchildren who are surviving, and, and in some sense, that makes it kind of easy. You know, you just divide everything under under. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Are you gonna find someone to get the little symbol tattoo? You are. No. You can come out like Whitley and Matt. Yeah. That is a gay thing. Who <laughs> 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 would you get that from? Oh. I'm not getting that from anyone. You know who's gonna get that out of Brett? He'd be the first anyone to get that. I think I want to get the LSU football tattoo. Why not? Why not? You're right. Why not? Yeah. Um, do you want to go to 11? Or? Yeah. Uh, so he said this is a trick question, too, so I'm excited. Okay. So the way okay. You still have a grandchild. Okay, so all three children. Well, not dead, only one that. One grandchild is dead. That means you got four, five grandchildren to survive. It's just funny math, right? Yeah. So you have like uh uh 
So you have like G, uh, the grand grandchild threes, uh, grandchildren, uh, great or like children surviving. So it's the great grandchildren, and uh, you get like you divide uh, his uh, one six by two, and then that's one half times one six equals uh, one twelve, and then the, the other grandchildren get. But yeah, it's similar. So here's a trick question. What statute do we look at? Can you say that again? Yeah. Subjection? Uh, yeah, I think it's actually uh, B. That is a good question. I wonder if mine is like outdated. Because I got like a used edition. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, see, it's, it's the 13, 15. Uh, 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 201.01. I don't think it is. <laughs> oh, actually, okay. I thought this was like an A right here for some reason. I was like, what's that? Yeah, yeah, yeah right but it's there. just like yeah. subsection A. Okay. <laughs> That's a good one. That was a trick question. <laughs> You mean the great grandchild two? One and two? So, great. Yeah, passed away, right? Okay. Surviving descendants of any predeceased child, right, or grandchild, or the surviving descendants of any predeceased descendant, right? You might, you might otherwise say. So that's not what that's not super well drafted, but you can kind of figure that out. 201.101, how they take that's a little bit of that. Does, it doesn't always I don't think it I don't know. We'll we'll see if you think it's if if it's if it's interpreted the way that uh, it appears to be written. Okay. Um, let's do problems, um, let's see, five, six, <coughs> let's do problem five first and we'll do like six, seven, eight, nine or something like that. Problem, problem five, who wants to do problem five? All right, well, let me, let me get Mr., uh, you're Mr. Jensen, right? Let me get Mr. Jensen back here, although I appreciate you. Don't, don't be a stranger, Mr. Lincoln. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Historical Thanks. hangover. Yeah, historical hangover. <laughs> Okay. All right. Yes, sir. Do one, two, and three, just do a third. Okay. So this is the scene. I won't even draw the surviving spouse up here because the surviving spouse is children of the one, two, three. And um, here are the grandchildren. This is one, two, three, four, five, six. And the great grandchildren. Who has great grandchildren? Who, who has great Grandchild three. Grandchild three has two of them, right? One, two, right? Is that okay? And in problem number five, Mr. Jensen, everyone's alive. Okay. So we have nearer, um, nearer um, relatives, in this case descendants, take in preference to their descendants. Their descendants don't take if they're alive. The descendants only take if they're if they're not alive, right? Okay. So. C123 each take. These other people are ignored because all of these children are alive. Okay? 
um, and that is 201.001B. That's how that applies. And you said each one in problem number five, each one of these children takes one third okay, of the entire state. And why is that? Uh, show me the statutory language. Please. Show me the money. 201.101. 101. Mm -hmm. Okay. And subsection A or B? One, two, A. You're exactly right. Go ahead and say it. You would be right. It's A. Okay. And give me, read me the language, just the pertinent part. Just the pertinent part of subsection A that tells us the children take. Um, it says, uh, the children who can in the first or the same degree of relationship alone and coming to the distribution of the income to the state takes her capita, which means that this. That's exactly right. Yeah, there it is. They stand, the children stand, in the, they do stand in the first group, um, and that has been taken one step. Removed from that parent, they take per capita, that is by the head, that is equal share per person. There are three of them. Each one takes one share, one third. Oh, that's, that, that's, that's um, uh, pretty straightforward. Let me ask you, any distinction in 001B uh, between um, real property and personal property? Okay, if we're in 001, there's no distinction between real property and personal property. It says the entire state, right? The state is divided this way. Um, how about um, any difference between community property and separate property? There is no, there is no community property. That's right. All these brothers trip me up. That's exactly right. There is no community property um, because there's no surviving spouse. Okay, that is number five. Um, by the way, does the answer to number five change if um, the student left parents or siblings or descendants of parents or siblings? No. Okay. Remember, it was only problem two. But I'll, I'm going to stop referring to that. Only, in all these problems, only problem number two did that make a difference. Um, okay. Um, very good. Now, the question in problems six, seven, eight, nine, what, Mr. Jensen, you don't have to do these if you don't want to. It's just, tell me kind of, how is six, uh, number six through nine different than problem five? What's different in the facts? Um, one, of the children, or one, one or more of the children have died, leaving descendants, but at least one of the children is still is still living. Okay, so now we may have now we have to divide things with different generations. That's a little bit more complicated in one oh one. In six, seven, eight, and nine, it's divided just the way you would expect it. Be divided without even reading 101. So we're going to read 101 just to satisfy ourselves on that one. Okay. In number six, um, we kill off. Who do we get to kill off in number six? Uh, C3, right? C3. Problem number six in C3. Who wants to do problem number six for me? Anyone? Mr. Jensen, you're doing great. If you want to continue, you can, or you can pass it to someone else. Because you're not even on call. Go again and talk again. Well, it's up to you. Sure. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Okay. Number six. C3 is dead. So what do we do? Um, so C1 and C2 still get their one third share. That's one third each. Uh huh. And then G4, 5, and 6 uh, split C3's one share. Their parents one third. And they get one ninth. That's right. They take a third of a third. One third times one third, that's one ninth each, right? And uh, by the way, I, I, I just I always keep forgetting these things. How do they take? What, how are how are how are their shares? Not 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 in um not in one oh one. We're going to get to one oh one in a moment. You you've already you just you just given me the answer in one oh one. Um, but in what kind of joint tenancy is this property owned? Whenever there's more than one person who comes into um, inheritance in um, 001. Every common? Well, yeah, it's, it's technically subsection A tells us passes in parsony, and that's an old um, uh, concurrent interest. It's an old English concurrent interest. For modern purposes, it's interchangeable from a tenancy. Okay, I mean, I think there were some differences in, in, it, in England in the old days, but for our purposes, modern day. 
there is no difference. In parsing, it means a tenancy in common. Not joint tenants with right of survivorship, but a tenancy in common. Okay, and you're exactly right. And can you show me in 201.101 which subsection are we in that tells me that in number six you got the right answer? It is B. We're in B, okay? And can you give me the pertinent language? Uh, each descendant and parents only got portion of the property to which the parents were descendants. That's right. If some of the persons described in subsection A are dead and some are living, you got children living, but one children's dead. One child is one children's dead. One child is dead. How's that? One child is dead, but that child has descendants. So if some are living and some are dead, each descendant of those persons would die, four, five, and six, uh, is, is, is entitled to a distribution of the intestate estate. And then each descendant, those people we just talked about, inherits only a portion of the property which the parent through whom the descendant inherits would be entitled to parent were alive. How much would child three be entitled to? One third. We knew that because that was the answer to problem five. Now we can split that one third in three ways. It's exactly what you would expect, but now I've proven it to you because you can I could be making this up. It's right, it's right there. Okay. Um, you can look it up. Some of you baseball fans here. Who is it? Leo Leo DeRocher who said you could look it up, I think. Does anyone know who Leo DeRocher was? What? I'm so I don't know. How many people know who Leo DeRocher was? Who was Le who and who was Leo DeRocher? Do you remember? <laughs> and he was an old manager. Uh, he was an old manager. He was a player before that. He's an old manager of, of, of various teams. He was manager of the Brooklyn Dodgers. No, no, I think Leo DeRocher was the manager of the um, of the New York Giants. New York Giants, and then the, later the San Francisco Giants, and then later I think the Chicago Giants too. So yes, he grew up. Well, I think they hated him as well. I think he was the arch rival. Okay. Apropos of absolutely nothing that will not be on the exam, I promise it's not going to be on the test, but sometimes we have to give you little bits of trivia to keep it interesting. And I was going to say to keep it real, but that isn't going to be true. Anyway, okay, keep it unreal, as the case may be. All right, Mr. Jensen, that's great. Thank you very much. That's problem number six. All right, anyone want to do seven, eight, and nine uh, and follow Mr. Jensen's wonderful lead here? Does the friend want to do that one? Okay. Uh, in seven, who do we kill off? C2 and C3 are both dead. Okay. Um, how are we distributing them then? So C1 and C3. C1 still gets his one third. Okay. And then G2 3 take uh, one sixth. Okay, so um, G2 through 3 each gets one half, because there are two of them, right? You said this year, time their fathers or mothers one third, which is one sixth each. And how about four, five, and six? We already know how four, five, and six they make one ninety. Okay. And again, it's because of, of um, the way we read 201.101 subsection B, some living and some are dead. Let me ask you this. You think this is the why? Okay, this is it. This is the rule. This is what's going to happen on the exam. Now I'm going to tell you, rarely do I do this, but I tell you the Uniform Probate Code rule. If you get confused easily, just go like this. No, 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 no. Don't listen for the next minute or two, okay? If you get confused easily, okay. You know who you are. <laughs> no, 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 you, you didn't see what she did. You, she went like this. <laughs> you usually do like this. You get to get like this. All right. Think about this. One third here, how much is left? Two thirds. Do you think the average intestate decedent would want it to pass this way? One third distributed, one six, one six, one third distributed, one ninth, one ninth. Or do you think that the average intestate decedent, I'm just talking about the average one, the average intestate decedent would say, these are my grandchildren, I love them equally, I want all five of these people to take an equal share. They might say that, and the Uniform Probate Code assumes that. So, the Uniform Probate Code would do it differently. The Uniform Probate Code would say C1 takes one third, and then the remaining two thirds, there are five grandchildren that are all related at the same level, each would take 2 fifteenths, which is slightly less than one sixth, but slightly more than one ninth. They would each take the same. And that is called, oh hell, what the hell, what the hell is that called? That is called, 
Uniform probate code has a special word for it. It's not crap all over, it's something like that. Um, it is per capita, per capita at each generation. Right? We're distributing it, we're taking whatever's left over and distributing it equally among that generation. That's not what Texas does. So if you get easily confused, forget what I've said for the last 60 to 90 seconds about this, okay? That's the Uniform Probate Code. I'm not going to test you on the Uniform Probate Code. You know who might test you on the Uniform the Probate bar. Code? No, the bar examiners never will, because we don't have the Uniform Probate oh. Code in this state. The bar examiners in another state, if you go to another state that has adopted the Uniform Probate Code, about half the states I think have, they may test you. I'm rarely going to refer to the Uniform Probate Code. Once or twice, I'm going to show you, by contrast, um, to Texas. Um, actually, Texas follows what's called the modern American rule, and we're going to see how that might make a difference later on. But once you, we always in Texas divide it with the first generation where there are living heirs. Once you've done that, you don't put it back together again. You divided it, and you just follow the shares down, just exactly like you would expect. Okay, exactly like we talked about in point one oh one, subsection B. Don't do it. Great. If I confused you enough, because you know I've got to get a good curve. Here, so I want to confuse, but I don't want to confuse anyone. Question about that? I don't want to confuse anyone. That uniform probate code. Don't worry about it. I'm not going to test you on it. All I want you to know is the right answer in number one, number seven, right? The right answer in number no, it's number six, seven, seven, seven number seven, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I could I could have used those numbers, right? Just erase that. Oh, seven, seven, okay. C1 gets one third because we divide it right here because there's someone living at this at this level. C uh, two um, grandchild two and three get one half of the, of their parents one third. That's one six each, and four through grandchildren four through six get one ninth. All right, that's what that's what you get. Hope so. Okay. So far so good. Okay. That was number seven. Okay, you want to do number eight too? Let me see if I can. In my notes, I keep flipping back and forth. I'm sorry about that. Number eight, we've got everyone. Oh, and now we fill off people. Okay? Is that right? In number eight, but we still have great grandchildren one and two. Yes? In number eight, right? <coughs> we don't have the great grandchildren? They're not around yet. They're not around yet. They're probably never Number eight. Isn't that number eight? That's, that's nine, ten, and eleven, right? There are no great grandchildren in number eight. Okay. All right. These people aren't here yet. Okay. They have not entered the room yet. They'll be entering the room in a little while. The moment. But they're not. Okay. Now, number eight. Okay. Number eight. So in number eight, we kill off great grandchild number three, but child number one is alive. So what? Same sections. I'm not going to go through it again. You can figure the sections out. You can see how, how the wording works. Harder living and harder dead in subsection B of 101. Child one takes one third. Child one takes one third. G2 will take one third. G2 will take the entire share of, um, of his deceased parent or her deceased parent. Uh, what about G3? G3 is not around. Okay. So we see this right away. If any if any person who would have been an heir predeceases the decedent, dies before the decedent, and doesn't leave any descendants, they're treated as never having existed. It's as if child two just had one child. Okay, right? Because grandchild three died before the decedent. The deceased the decedent is as if they never existed. Okay. So one third to C1, one third to grandchild two, and then four, five, and grandchild four, five, six, go ahead. Okay? I didn't write all that on the board. Sorry, I have to get past it. Uh, get through these. Do I owe you all five minutes? Do you owe me five minutes? Yeah. I don't think you ever took them. Did you take them? I thought I was we took them. No, we you were not. No, we went all the way to the time. You went all the way to the time, so I didn't go over, and I didn't go under. I don't know. You may have gone over. Oh, nice girl. I think it was like 15 seconds or a second. All right, okay, all right, I'll try to let you have a second. Okay. All right, okay, that is number eight. How about number nine? Now, number nine, we are adding in 
now we have the great grandchildren. Okay. So in number nine, same we're in the same section. C1 gets a third. C3 is one third is inherited four, five, and six, one ninth each, right? Now, what happens to C2's one third? C2 that's the sixth. And what happens now? We can't ignore these people. Great grandchildren, one, two, are going to be all six. This is the sixth, and this is one half of the six. That's one twelfth each. Okay, one twelfth each. Great grandchild, one and two, get one twelfth each. On the final exam, I promise you, I will not do it any worse than twelve. I'll try to keep it no worse than eight or nine. Maybe even six or eight. Okay, I'll try to keep it at denominator. Under 10, but sometimes it might it might be it might be 12, but it won't be any worse than that. It won't be 137, but it won't be any okay. Now I can't guarantee in real life it won't be that way, and I also can't guarantee that the bar examiners might not do that, but uh, I'm not gonna make it that bad. Okay, that was number nine, right? Now number ten. All right, now number ten. Here it goes. Kill off all the children, number ten. But all the grandchildren are still alive in number 10. So, child, grandchild 3 is alive. Okay, this is number 10. Okay? Okay. Now, what do they take? You want to do it? You're doing great. Right. I'll do it. Okay. All right. So you each take a 6 and a Y. We're in 101 subsection what? Per capita. That's right. We're back in subsection A. 201.101 in number 10. Subsection A, children sent to brother, sister, aunt, uncle, to other relatives in the test state who stand in the first, they don't stand in the first, or same degree of relationship alone, they do. They all stand in the same degree. It has to be the second degree. One, two steps back up to grandpa or grandma, right? And, and they come into the distribution of the intestate estate. They take per capita, which means by the persons, not one third, one third, one third, and then one third, six, one ninth, not that. The old English rule, that's the strict per sturpy. That's not the modern majority rule in America. That's not the rule that Texas follows. Texas follows the so called modern American rule, which is probably the majority rule in the United States. You can see that by a careful reading of 201.101, subsection A. They stand, all of these people stand in the same degree alone. They take per capita, not they're serpents, not through the roots, not their parents' third, dividing them up like we did before. Because they're all on the same level. We make it cut at the first generation where there are any heirs. Here it is. And they take equal. They stand in the same degree alone. One sixth each. The modern American rule, that group or was it the English rule. And if you talked about this in your first year of property class, and some people probably talked a little bit about inheritance just for like oh well thank you. Is that boy wants on water, right? No, you know. That's why I think he wants on water, right? He gets to everything. I don't know how he gets to everything. Right? <laughs> <laughs> what? Is that right? Well, it's true. He's he, he kind of limping on water. Yeah, oh. he's crutching. Uh, yeah, yeah. He and his crutches go out on water right now. Okay. Um, well, maybe probably, I mean, if you were in my property class and some of you were, I talked about inheritance for about five years. Right? I mean, it was, it was pretty fast, okay? And the old English rule of inheritance, strict per sturpy, it was called strict per sturpy, said you can't ignore any generation. Even if all the children were dead, three children, one third, one third, one third, this child would get a third, this, the, each of these grandchild would get a six, each of these grandchild would get a ninth. That's the old way to do it. That's not the way we do it in Texas. What do you think the, um, the average intestate decedent would want? The American rule, everyone split fairly because they're all equally related. That's why the Uniform Probate Code per capita of each generation is better, but don't worry about the Uniform Probate Code. Okay? All right. That is problem number 10. Now, problem number 11, we just kill who? Who are we doing? Um, let's see. We kill one grandchild. We kill number three, right? Yeah. 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 Problem 10? Did we just kill problem 11? No, problem 11. Problem 11. Okay. Can we just kill one more? We kill, we kill this one, right? Okay. All right. So, now we kill this one, right? Is that right? We're problem number 11 now? Right. Okay. All right. We kill this one. And what do you think we do? Now, now I'm not going to make you look at it again, but we're, we're actually, sadly, we have to read 
101 A and B together, we're kind of really in B. You have to kind of understand how A works. So where are we? Each one takes what? So Grandchild one, one, two, two four, four, five, and six. six. They each get one six, right? Because this is the first generation where there are any survivors. And if all of them had survived, you already know the answer because the answer was the answer to problem 10. They each would have taken a six. But this one's dead, so it's split this one. They each split their, they each split the six, so each of them takes one twelve. One half of that, one six, or one twelve. Okay? Um, that's problem 11. Now, who's, who, who is the smarty pants about 1991? Before, before, yeah, that's right. Before 1991, <laughs> what was the predecessor's day? That was in my notes. You have the notes for someone else. That was no, the, I don't. That was you enough. said the last week. Yeah, I mean, I think I, 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 think I said, said something the other day about um, community property. And there was also 101, well, the predecessor to point 101 was not clear before 91. So don't, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, okay? But if you're doing title work, you got to know the old rules. Oh, and if they aren't clear, oh my gosh, what a mess. So um, that is, um, that's, that's that. Uh, let's see what else I want to say about any of this. Um, oh heck, that's 11, that's 11, okay, um, you know what, <clears throat> I owe you, you say I owe you 15 seconds, look at this, it's like two minutes early, this is, this is two, you know, you're going to put on my evaluation, Alton lets us out like two minutes early, oh he doesn't start and end class on time because it's two minutes early, you better not do that, okay. I don't know why people do that. Why, why, why do people do that? Do I can do see that? I see you don't <laughs> complain when I keep you open. It's the most but ridiculous thing. That's right. All right, two minutes early. Remember this because I probably will at some point when I keep you two minutes late. Have a good weekend, everyone. We'll start next time. I'll break into groups and we'll work problems 12 through 19 at the beginning of class on Tuesday. And